Hi, my name is Sean Olson. This video will show you the basics of using Wallworm to get your models into the Source Engine. It's very quick and easy. If you have Wallworm installed, you can go to the Wallworm menu, Wallworm Model Tools, and Wallworm Model Tools. This brings up a floater. This floater is the main UI for Wallworm Model Tools when you want to export models and control settings for the model. The basic process is to click this Pick Model button and select the main mesh. Immediately you'll see that there's a text node in the scene that's created. This is what we call the Wallworm Model Tool Helper. You'll see WWMT Helper in the documentation. That object stores all the information about your model. So if later we come back into this scene and we want to re-export it or change a setting, we would open up this floater and click Pick Model and choose the helper instead of the model and this will pre-fill what we currently had set for the model. At this point, if I want to get the textures in the game, I'll hit this export VTFs. It'll bring up a dialog that will show us the materials and textures that are part of this model. I've already previously exported these bitmaps, but I'll re-export them again. And here's the material. If I want these bitmaps to go to the same path as the material, I can choose this up arrow and change the path for these. Now if I hit export, all of my materials will be in this wallworm.com light cube folder with a VMT and two VTFs. I'm going to export selected. Now it's going to bring up this dialog and I'm going to move those to the other screen. While it's compiling those textures, I can now just export my model. If I click this button, it'll bring up this little window and we'll see this little dialogue and now the model is in the game. Now the model that I just exported was just this mesh. Say I want a collision model. I can open the collision model in physics tab and I can either pick a hall or append a hall that's selected in the scene. I'm going to click the scene explorer and I'm going to unhide an object I already have in this scene and it's my collision hall. I'm going to select the collision hall so it's the current object selected. I can then click this Add CM Cell button and it will actually just add all the currently selected objects to my collision model. If I click that, now the model, that mesh is assigned. Now this is kind of important. I'm going to isolate the hall selection. Notice how the faces are all, uh, there's no smoothing. It's very important if you have a collision hall that's like this, that the smoothing groups is set up correctly or you will not get a correct collision hall. There's a convenient function in Wallworm that you can automatically smooth that for you. If you hit this process CM button, it will apply all the smoothing you need for your collision hall to be exported correctly. You can do the hall count and notice however if I click this it says 1. The reason is I need to tell this that this is going to be a concave collision hall for the source engine. So I'm going to click that button and now if I click this hall count again you'll see that it says there's going to be 18 pieces. At this point if I export QCN model my model will be in the game with a collision hall and notice this time you see that it has a statue hall. My path here is wallworm.com slash lightcube so in my model browser if I go to wallworm.com slash lightcube and my model name is wallworm statue here's the statue and the shininess is based off of the material settings that I currently have set on here and that was it that's how easy it is in fact if we go to the physics tab you'll see that we have our collision hole and that's how quick and easy it is now I'm going to explain a couple other things in the UI that are not always commonly known by everyone and that is some of these buttons up here if I click this QC button, it will autom it will just open up the QC that Wallworm generated. So this is a simple QC, and you can see that it uh, it has all of the things that we have set up here. And now there's a lot more features that you can set in Wallworm. Um, we're not using all of those right now for the simple one. Also, let's open that up again. Notice at the end there's this include line. Every time Wallworm generates the QC, it adds this line. And what it does is, it, the whole purpose of this is so that you can inject custom commands that are not controlled by Wallworm. 
So there are a lot of things like Gibbs and all that that you can do, sequences, LODs, etc. inside a wallworm, but there may be more advanced things that you can't. But it's a good idea not to actually overwrite the QC here. Instead, you should click this QCI button and it will open up this other file. If you click that, this is the file that's always injected into the QC. So you can add commands here and this file never gets overwritten. The QC file, however, Wallworm overwrites every time you export it unless you turn on lock QC. The QCI file, however, only gets created. Once created, it never gets overwritten. A few of these other buttons, the DIR button, if you click this, it will open up a window that includes um, the folder where the model gets compiled to and exported. The model source button opens up if you want to go to where the QC and SMD files are. The VMT dir opens up the directory where your VMT exported to. In this case, I have a couple VMTs and the VTFs. And this raw button will open up a folder that represents where TGA files get uh, written to. So that's the basics of Wallworm model tools for getting your model into source. My name is Sean Olson. This is a demonstration of using Wallworm to get your models into the source engine. Thank you and have a good day.